I think it was earlier this year that uh, Leah got in touch with me to ask if I'd make some uh, work for this conference. Um, I'm a minister, I work primarily in the area of creative arts and spirituality. I don't have a great deal of experience of working with uh, migrants, asylum seekers uh, and refugees. So I approached it with some degree of, of trepidation, which is how I do most of my ministry, really. <laughs> Um, and, and I said, I, I really don't know I'm, I'm the right person for this. I don't know anything about this. Uh, and we have in the Arts Centre that um, uh, I help to run in Sheffield, uh, City of Sanctuary meets there uh, every week. And you know, I, I know the people uh, there. And so uh, I started to talk with, uh, uh, with some, some of the people there, Pride and Fear as I hear, who have become friends. And uh, out of those conversations, I wanted to make some uh, paintings that... Um, started to tell, express something of their stories and their experiences. Usually when I'm painting, it's an excavation of myself, and I'm trying to express something of my own story on the canvas. But uh, for these pieces, uh, I, I wanted to fade into the background and uh, allow other stories um, to flourish uh, and, and blossom. And, and in many ways, um, uh, paintings are a sacrament. Uh, of our deep experience. And these paintings are, are sacraments of uh, encounters uh, with uh, Firaz, uh, Grace uh, and Isaac, her son, and, and, uh, and Pride on the end. Um, that there are, uh, when two human beings meet, there is, uh, both are strangers, there is deep mystery uh, on, on both sides, and the mystery deepens as we encounter each other at a deeper and deeper level. Uh, and, and painting has plenty of space for, for mystery uh, in ways that, 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 that words sometimes can't, can't, really, uh, can't really grasp. Poetry can do it, I think. Um, anyway, that said, this is about um, these stories, not mine. So I'm going to invite Firas, who has made a heroic journey today. He set off from Sheffield. At what time was it, Firas? Early this morning. And has only just arrived here, so he's had a heroic journey. So Firas is going to talk for a little bit about, about your story, and then Pride is going to, going to say something as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Hello. It's lovely to be here, Anthony, to find lovely people as well. And very hot weather, that's nice. <laughs> My name is Firas. I come from Iraq. It's about, uh, I've been here, it's about like eight years now. Uh, I come from uh, Iraq and I was in, uh, what do you call it, in uh, Baghdad, its capital city. Uh, my journey starts at about, it was in winter, I think, in that time. It's not a very nice journey, it's very long, and uh, I wish, in deep in my heart, nobody will have this work again, hopefully. But anyway, this is life sometimes. Uh, when I first time uh, arrived uh, to the UK, straight away I arrived to uh, Wakefield. After that, I moved to Sheffield. Now I, need, I, I feel, to be honest with you, it's, uh, Sheffield is my town or it's my city. I love my city as well, but, but definitely Sheffield is my other city or something. <laughs> when I travel nowadays in, now in, in London, really I like London, <laughs> but definitely I would back. I do a lot of volunteer work as well. I can't stay at home. When I start uh, to do the process for asylum or something, they ask me, I am not allowed to work. I said, okay, that's fine. But uh, I'm allowed to do volunteer work. They said, yes, you can do volunteer work. So since after two months, 2008 till now, I've never stopped voluntary work, which I love that. It's uh, give me more experience and it's make me useful as well. I don't want you to be here just a person, just eat or something. No, I have something to offer. And I can learn something, and I can show others I've learned something, and I can do something as well. And uh, I, I can, what do you call, motivate others my, from my background as well, so they can do something as well. They can see Firas first time when he came, for example, he can see, uh, speak that much English, or I can, and yes, my English is not perfect, but I do my best. Uh, I've done my, what do you call, level two, uh, reading and writing and Jesus E in math. I'm very good in math. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's my big, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, point when I came here to this country. It's the difference. Different faith, different culture, different uh, language. 
different people I can see. First time I was thinking I have to learn or to see how is the British culture or English culture. But when I start to leave, I said, no, it's definitely you have to learn all other culture as well, which is a wonderful thing. I was thinking, I said, wow, oh, how come it works? All these different people from different faith, different background, different color, different culture. How it's worth that? It's a wonderful thing, honestly. I can't imagine if somebody tell me it's worth very well. It's really helped the society. It's really helped the economy. It's, I can't speak more than that, maybe, the time. But I feel it is really helpful for me as well. I can see that in many ways when I meet people as well. Uh, we do uh, the... On Wednesday at uh, Victoria Hall, it's a uh, church. When I go there first time, I said, how come church? And I am Muslim. I said, what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong at all. It's a really wonderful thing as well. And I start to, uh, what do you call, to involve more. I've been in too many churches, Methodist, Angli uh, Church of England as well. And the most important thing last time when I went to Quaker as well. It's something really good. I can find everybody, he has got his opinion about God. I believe that 100 percent is one God, and each one he has got different opinion of God. It doesn't uh, what do you call uh, uh, what do you, uh, prevent me to deal with that person, whatever his faith. It's the opposite. It's make me really close. We have too many things to share in every single faith. Yes, there are some uh, what do you call contracts, but it doesn't. Uh, uh, what do you call make us uh, to feel like different or we can't work together? No, it's definitely we have to work together. Uh, the good thing about, uh, I try to talk about uh, volunteering, it's uh, make me, as I said, it's useful and it's make others as well. If they can sh see something about this person, he come here and he start to, uh, his life through all these difficult and he start in, and he want to show, not just to show, he want to say, I am useful as well. I can take something, I can learn something, yes, but I can teach as well. Yes, it's not, sometimes maybe it's not, uh, what do you call, uh, very effective or something, but you can get an opinion, you can get an idea, and we, I can start from this, I, I can learn as well. I don't want to talk about you, maybe 10 minutes going or something. No, it's not too <laughs> Thank you. I, I made too many friends. And my big, what you call, about faith as well. It's really something make me fascinated about faith. It's uh, make my faith through my journey from this thing. Uh, the way when I came here, it's a very long time. It's, I can get easy in, in the wrong direction. It was on that time, it's really easy to go to the wrong direction, to be a basically bad person. The one that keeps me and keep me nowadays to keep going and keep talking like this is my faith, honestly. When I spoke to Rick first time when he said like if there's any symbol or something, it's definitely my faith. This is that uh, like a shrine behind me. It's in Baghdad as well. Uh, it's like uh, this one. It's one of the Prophet Muhammad peace upon of him uh, grandson. On that time we learn from there. When we go there, we find peace. It's like the same way when any kids go to church or any place or any temple. It's same thing. It just uh, uh, give you uh, uh, the direction, or the it's like a catalog for you to follow the rule, to follow things, to be useful, not to hurt anybody, and just make, basically live your life like this. Thanks for listening. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us to your conference and. Uh, I'm just here today to share my story with you guys. I'm sure you must have heard about a lot of things r related to migrants and asylum and this, uh, this other kind of things going on in England these days. My name is Pride, I'm from Cameroon. In Cameroon, we speak both English and French. And as a result, we have a minority and a majority problem with the English region being the minority. So we have a French oppressing government. Our uh, president has been in power for 35 years and he's still running for the next term in election. So as a boy, I joined my dad in this activist group fighting for the rights of the English-speaking Cameroonians. And that's the flag you could see behind the painting. It's called Southern Cameroon National Council. And our job is to try to get the independence of Southern Cameroon. Ex uh, that is exactly what Scotland wanted. 
a couple of <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the, the David Cameron was was not angry and sent the troops up there to get people beaten or put people in jail. But unfortunately, in Africa, that is what happened. Whenever you go out in the streets to campaign for the right of the English-speaking Cameroonians, you you are you are, you, are, you are always being faced with soldiers with with guns, and they don't want to speak the language of peace. But they fire against you, and I have a lot of friends that have been killed. So I walk around with a lot of guilt because I invited them to this to these rallies. So actually, I came. In, I came here to study computer engineering at the University of Portsmouth in 2009. And two weeks when I, while, while I was here, I received a phone call from back home saying that my dad had passed away as a result of police brutality and I was a wanted man. I really got confused at that time. I didn't know what to do. All of his assets were frozen. The government closed his bank accounts. I couldn't, it was hard for me to even continue study at that time. I couldn't even go home because there was no reason for me to be here. I had to claim asylum. Now, claiming asylum, you think that that might be the end of the road, but unfortunately, that is another journey on its own. You are, uh, my interview was for almost four hours and I had to answer over 200 and something questions at a go. I'm sure all of us in this room have been to interview for jobs and we know how nervous that could be. So what, what, what about somebody else? Or what about me answering the same questions which my life depends on? So you're always nervous and you make mistakes. And when you make these mistakes, you pick on these mistakes. And that is where you have a refusal letter. Now, as we all know, asylum seekers are not allowed to work. And as a result, the government gives us a sum of £35 a week to live on. And that's just uh, that's uh, your feeding and your clothing and whatever needs you might you might have you might want during that week. It's a really really hard life, and I've been in the asylum process for more than five years now. So it's uh, I suffer from post trauma and and, uh, and 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 like anxiety. So one of the things that have really kept me going is my faith, because I believe in God and I go to church nearly every day. There had actually been a point in my life where I said there was no need for me to keep on suffering. I think I should end my life. But just because I go to, I go to church, I find peace. And that peace alone is what gives me the strength to continue to try to prove your case one way or the other. Life is not as easy as many people in England think that asylum seekers have come to seize jobs like, how, like what we hear on, on the media and they are collecting benefits and living good housing. My house, my roof was leaking for like two years and I reported to, 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 to the home office and they didn't do any, like anything about it. When this water drips from my roof, it drops on me and I'll get up in the middle of the night frightened, thinking that I'm back home and there is a water cannon that has been splashed on me. And in that effect, I might run into a wall or hit my knee against the radiator. I got up with a swollen knee the, the, the next day. It took them two years to repair that roof. And when the roof was being repaired, I had a warning letter. And the letter was just because I had to involve the council for my roof to be repaired. So that's how hard life can be. And in my situation, there is nothing we could do. Because as someone claiming asylum, it's one of the group of people that you can pick on and you will not get any reaction from them. They are voiceless people. Whatever is said to them, they just accept and try to move on. I think I'll stop here for now, and if there is any questions, I'll take them at the end. Thank you for this. Thanks so much, you too. Um, be before Lucy calls back on, I'd like to say uh, a little about um, Grace as well, who can't, who can't be um, here because she's got childcare back in, in, uh, in Sheffield. Um, another a remarkable individual. Um, Grace is from uh, Uganda. Uh, she's been here for, I think, has Grace been here for six, six or seven years? Yeah. Um, and she, ha she has been granted asylum now, hasn't she? And, she? and she's trained to be a care worker. Um, but she, she came here um, because she was fleeing an abusive relationship. And uh, she uh, had to leave her two daughters back in Uganda uh, 
and that, that you can see them in the back of back of the painting. And this this was from a photograph that uh, Grace showed me when, when I went to visit her, uh, and that was the last time she saw uh, her daughters in that in that photograph. She's still in touch with them, but she's not seen them for for all that time. And then in this uh, in this country, she's had a son Isaac, who's two years old and is 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 just a a, a, a delight and a very <laughs> isn't he? Um, and a, again, I mean, you, you've heard uh, uh, Firaz and Pry talk about their faith and, and, and how that has, has been the, the, the rock, really, that's, that's, that's kept them going. Um, Grace talks very profoundly about her faith uh, as, as a Catholic. Um, uh, as, and it's one of the things that, that's the only thing that's kept her going at times. Um, you can maybe just about make out uh, there's an outline on, on the left-hand side of the painting of, of the Virgin Mary. And that is from a statue uh, in, in Grace's house that, that Grace's mother sent, sent her, a, a statue of, of the Virgin Mary. And one of the things that really came through to me uh, talking with Grace, I know it's imperfect me relaying the story to you, um, was, was the, really the strength of all this love. Um, from, from here... Uh, as to a, a, a son Isaac right there in front of her, her daughters back in Uganda and her own mother back in Uganda as well sending this, this um, uh, a statue of the Virgin Mary as, as a symbol of her prayer and, and care and in some way that, 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 that red line you see is, is an um, embodiment of, of, of the mother's love that flows uh, across nations really.